channel it's Gabriella it's a bit noisy today maybe you can hear it I don't know um but anyways today I am going to be trying to make a calzone pizza um I really like pizza so <laughs> even though I'm lactose intolerant but yeah so I got this video idea um from another channel from it was filmed a few years back but I thought, oh, that would be cool. Let me try to see if I can make a pizza in my tangia. So mm. I'll link it down below in the description box. But for now, these are the ingredients. These are my pans. One is Teflon nonstick, and this one is just the aluminium one that came with Trangia set. So I've got some flour in here, some mozzarella cheese, I've got olive oil, some salt and pepper, I think over there, some Italian herb mix, and some pesto, green and red pesto, oh this is really good, <laughs> red and green pesto, and in the container I've got some sliced onions, diced garlic, some frozen slash defrosted sweet corn and some sliced tomatoes as well all right then <laughs> i'm gonna start off with the vegetables because that's what the guy did in his video so i'm just going to fry the onions and the garlic and then i'm going to add in the frozen slash almost defrosted sweet corn and then the tomatoes just slightly fry them in my non-stick teflon frying pan and then mix the flour the oil and some water which reminds me i need to bring out some water but it's self-raising flour which i thought was quite interesting because usually when you make pizza at home you add yeast and you don't usually make it in a metal bowl which is what i was not taught to do in food tech we were taught not to make in a metal container or using a metal spoon or something like that so this will be quite interesting but yes yeah, so I'm just gonna start by mixing the dough hope you can hear me I just noticed I speak quite quietly and there's birds so <laughs> um yeah so I'm gonna mix a cup of flour as suggested in the other video I'm not going to add all of it just in case I discover that I've added too much water so I can add some more flour but if you're camping, um, just you can always bring the flour in the actual paper container that it comes in, or you can just put it in a Ziploc bag or in a plastic container. It's completely up to you. So I've put this much flour left, just in case it's too sticky. So now I'm going to add the oil. Just put a little bit. I don't really know how much was used in the other video. I'm just. You know, make it up as I go along because there weren't any instructions as to the measurements so. so this is what it looks like with the oil and I'm gonna add some water okay I haven't put too much water I don't know if you can see but I'm just gonna mix that and if it needs more water I'll just add some more water So this is what the dough is looking like. It's kind of not that sticky. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, it's not too sticky, but it's also not not sticky. If that makes sense. And the guy said that you do want it to be a little bit sticky, so I, I think this is good enough. I'm just gonna try to knead it with the spoon and see how that goes, because I don't really want to use my hands unless I have to, because I'm outside and. I can't be bothered to keep going inside to wash my hands all the time. <laughs> it's not really sticking to the sides of the bowl, which is apparently a good sign when making dough, especially for bread anyway. So I think, I think it's fine, yeah. She says as it sticks <laughs> to the bowl. <laughs> so I think I'm just going to flour the 
bottom and surroundings like the edges of the bowl just while I'm frying the vegetables in case when it's rising it will stick to the sides because sometimes that happens when you leave dough to rise so I'm just gonna lightly flour the surface so I'm just gonna leave the dough here on the side so now I'm gonna turn on my train gel a little bit of oil into the pan since it's non-stick it shouldn't need anything really but just to make sure added the herb to the vegetables so I'm going to add some the Italian herb mix some salt and some pepper as well so I turned off the vegetables which actually is the best that I use um, <laughs> And now I'm going to just prepare the dough so I can put stuff in it and then cook it in the other pot that I have over here. So that's what you're going to see me do now. my cousin before I fold it or as a pizza you could put in the oven I guess <laughs> um, so I put the tomato pesto because I couldn't be bothered to make my own tomato base or use plain tomato so I just used some tomato pesto then got the mozzarella cheese then the vegetables I fried you can see here then a few dollops of green pesto and then some cheese on top again because the guy put cheese on top of everything um, when he was making it so now I'm just going to fold it over hopefully <laughs> all this will fit and fall inside I don't know I still have some vegetables left which you probably saw um, I just left them there and you can just eat that which is probably what I'm going to do or put it in a sandwich or something um, so yeah I'm just going to fold the pizza like a fat dumpling <laughs> all right so I'm just gonna put some oil in the pan or turn it back on and put some oil in the pan um, put the pizza on top and the guy said to leave it for seven to eight minutes I believe so that's what I'm gonna do and then I'll flip it over put some more oil on top before I do that so it doesn't stick to the bottom leave it for another five minutes I guess and then I think we'll be ready to reap the <laughs> results of our hard work if you decide to do this too and not get attacked by flies all the time. <laughs> my phone as a timer but I am recording using my phone and I don't have my watch on 
So I'm gonna be going inside and put a timer on for seven to eight minutes, which you shouldn't normally do because of fire. But yeah. In case you're wondering why I use two pans this time, uh, it's because my te Teflon one. Oh, As I was saying, it's because the Teflon pan. Um, obviously, it's better for frying because it's non-stick. But when it's time to like cover the other part, I don't really like to leave it on there because it might take off the Teflon or mess up the non-stick. I don't know. I don't want to risk it because these aren't exactly cheap. <laughs> so yeah, I use the aluminium one when I want to use it as a lid when I don't want anything to get through. Otherwise, I just use the lid that I used last time, which works as a cutting board or you can drain it as well as it being a lid. So, yeah, that's fine. And uh, when doing this pizza thing, it was said to use low heat, so I'm using really low heat and I can literally hear the flame going. Like it's sputtering. <laughs> so I'm guessing hopefully it's really low. It grew. <laughs> Look, it got bigger. This is what it looks like and now I'm going to leave it for another 5-6 to six minutes. Hopefully all the dough will be able to cook. Whoa. This is why I used this pot and not the Teflon pot. <laughs> this is what it looks like. If I'm being honest, I'm not sure if all the dough has cooked properly. And I don't want a bloated stomach. <laughs> oh, what is... Yeah, I don't think the dough cook properly. I might eat this now, or I might put it in the oven inside. So, I wouldn't say this is a fail, but I wouldn't say it's a pass either. Things to do better, probably make the dough thinner um, when preparing for the calzone. I fold it make the dough thinner I just didn't want the stuff inside to fall through the dough so I didn't make it too thin but um, if I can find a section that is not uncooked I will eat some and give my opinions on that but as of now like I don't know if you can see here when I prod it it doesn't really look doesn't really look cooked yeah. Let's let's try it nonetheless. <laughs> let's give it a go. Some of it stuck, but none of it really stuck to the bottom, and I think that's pretty good. The reason why I think some of it stuck to the sides is because when I was trying to flip it, I did accidentally rip some of it. But otherwise, for the most part, this looks pretty good. It kind of looks like an omelette. <laughs> um, but no, it looks really cool. I don't know if you can see the inside just there. Whoa. I'm going to use the pesto spoon. Let's see what it's like. I'm gonna try like this. The insides, I will say, taste really nice. Now time for the dough. This part of the dough tastes cooked. It's, um, I want to say, not very fluffy but I don't really mind that it's a bit more crunchy and puff pastry like to a normal pizza dough I guess so if I 
Ultra. I see. I will say, it does taste quite nice. Um, but yeah. I think what you can do to make it make sure it cooks properly, like I said before, just um make the dough not so thick. But otherwise, look at this. Whoa, that looks so cool. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna pour myself a nice lemonade and finish this inside try and avoid the uncooked dough but otherwise that's it for me i hope you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a like if you did share with your friends or anyone you think might be interested in outdoor cooking um if you want to try this recipe indoors feel free and let me know how it goes in the comments down below if you have any other recipes you'd like me to try on my trend gel, also comment those below and Subscribe if you are new. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in my next upload. Bye.